let's look at how to solve uh, differential equations now using the Laplace transform. So this is section 4.3 um, in your text, differential equations. And uh, um, I'll illustrate the, the method uh, by working through an example. Um, so this is problem 4.3 dash 1b and in operator notation the differential equation is d squared plus 4d plus 4 uh, y of t and that's equal to uh, d plus 1 x of t and we're given the initial conditions that uh, y of 0 minus is equal to 2 and the first derivative of y at 0 minus is equal to 1 and we want to solve this differential equation when the input is e to the minus t u of t. So we've solved um, problems similar, similar to this uh, back in, uh, pre in previous chapters, chapter 2, uh, where we um, worked everything in the time domain. Uh, but now we're going to use Laplace transforms. Um, first thing we'll do is, is actually uh, Laplace transform, directly Laplace transform uh, this differential equation. So um, the second order derivative term here, uh, second order derivative of y with respect to t, would become s squared times the Laplace transform of y. I'm just going to write that as, as y instead of y of s minus s times y of 0 minus um, minus y dot of 0 first derivative so this is this is actually the Laplace transform of just the d squared y term and then I've got the 4 d y term so that will be 4 s y um, minus 4 times y at 0 minus and then finally I'll have my 4y term, 4y of t term, that transforms as just 4y. And then similarly on the, on the right hand side, the first derivative of x transforms as sx minus x of 0 minus. And this is the time domain function evaluated at 0 minus. And then plus 1 times x, that transforms as just uh, capital X. Um, x of 0 minus um, will always be 0 for a causal input, so we can scratch that term. Uh, let me co collect uh, terms here on the uh, involving y's, and I'll have s squared plus 4s plus 4 all times y. That takes care of that term, that term, and that term. And let me collect the uh, uh, y zero minus terms. I'll have minus s plus four all times y zero minus. That's from that term, and then that term, and then the only term I have left is the y dot term. Okay. And then on the right hand side, I'll have s plus one times x. Of course I want to solve this <coughs> for y, um, so with just a little algebra, I, I'll take these two terms to the other side, um, they'll become uh, s plus 4 y0 minus plus y dot 0 minus, all divided by this term that's multiplying y. Um, this polynomial expression, s squared plus 4s plus 4. And then I also have my x term, so that would be s plus 1 um, over s squared plus 4s plus 4 all times x. I've written it in this form. You've got a term here that depends on the initial conditions, so this will actually correspond to our zero input solution 
And then similarly, we've got a uh, component here that doesn't depend on the initial conditions at all. It depends only on the input x. And so this would this will uh, correspond. This portion will correspond to our zero state response. Um, in this particular problem, with the x of t being e to the minus t uh, u of t, we will have that x of s is then 1 over s plus 1. And so now writing out y of s from the previous line and plugging in my initial conditions, uh, the zero input response term becomes 2s plus 9 over s squared plus 4s plus 4 and then I have uh, my uh, zero state response term. I had an s plus 1 in the numerator there but that's going to that's multiplied by the Laplace transform of x of t which is 1 over s plus 1 so that numerator term cancels and I'm left with just s squared plus 4s plus 4. Uh, these actually have the same de denominator so I can write this as as 2s plus 10 and I can write uh, um, factor the denominator here as actually s plus 2 squared. Um, I can the next step within to be uh, would be to use a partial fraction expansion. I'll have an s plus 2 squared term and an s plus 2 term. Um, I can evaluate the s plus 2 squared term using uh, the cover-up method. When you do that, the coefficient here becomes 6, and then solving for the other coefficient where the s plus 2 term you get you get 2. And so now I'm in a to the point where I can find the uh, inverse Laplace transform, and I get um, uh, for uh, this first term, I'll get 6t e to the minus 2t u of t, and then the second term becomes 2e to the minus 2t u of t. So uh, this is um, the solution y of t that actually satisfies the differential equation and should um, also satisfy our, our given initial conditions as well. Um, I want to look at uh, an alternative way of solving this system. Um, this alternative method is particularly useful um, when we're working with uh, the system and uh, we may want to find the output for uh, different inputs, different x of t's. Again, we can find the zero input response uh, uh, separately from the zero state response. Um, and I can find that just by working with the differential equation and setting the right hand side equal to zero and take the Laplace transform here I'll get uh, s squared y minus s y zero minus minus y dot of zero minus this is all from the Laplace transform of that um, second order derivative and then for the the first order derivative the 4d term I'll get 4s y minus 4 y 0 minus and then finally for the uh, from the 4 y of t term I'll get 4 y. Set this equal to 0. Um, uh, again gather my terms just involving y. I'll have s squared plus 4s plus 4 all times y take the other terms uh, to the other side. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my initial conditions. Um, uh, when I do that here I'll, I'll get uh, 2s and then I'll get uh, a minus uh, y dot and a minus 4y0 and take that to the other side. That evaluates to 9 
And so in solving for y here, I'll get 2s plus 9 over s squared plus 4s plus 4, or um, 2s plus 9 over s plus 2 squared, or 2 over s plus 2 plus 5 over s plus 2 squared. s plus 2 squared. And so I can find uh, the corresponding uh, from the partial fraction expansion. I can now uh, find the corresponding uh, uh, time expression. This is actually just the zero input component. So it's determined completely by the initial conditions. So as long as the initial conditions don't change, uh, this part of the solution would be the same. E to the minus 2t u of t, and then plus 5t e to the minus 2t u of t uh, for the zero input portion of the solution. Um, now let's look at the zero state response okay. and again starting with the differential equation d squared plus 4d plus 4 y of t is equal to d plus 1 x of t now uh, again I, uh, this is in the form uh, Q of D, Y of T is equal to P of D, X of T. Uh, I take the Laplace transform here, but now this is done with all the initial conditions set equal to zero. So my D squared Y just becomes um, S squared Y, and then I'll have 4 S Y plus 4 Y and then on the on the right hand side I'll have um, you know s x plus x here um, uh, separating um, uh, factoring out the y term I'll have s squared plus 4s plus 4 times y is equal to s plus 1 times x and so I can solve for y now it's equal to s plus 1 times s squared plus 4s plus 4, all times the input, um, the Laplace transform of the input here. Um, I can recognize that this term in parentheses is determined just by the form of the differential equation, actually just by uh, the coefficients of uh, the q and p polynomials. Um, it doesn't depend on the input or the output at all. Uh, we, this, this is generally called the transfer function of the system. And I can write, um, if I call this term in parentheses h of s, that's the standard notation. Uh, so h of s is defined as the system transfer function. But you can see the utility of the system transfer function as once I have it, I can find uh, the Laplace transform of the output for any input by just taking the Laplace transform of the input and multiplying it by the system transfer function. Uh, in this particular case, um, plugging in Our expression for um, the Laplace transform of our given x of t, and here's my system transfer function this time, s plus 1 over s plus 2 squared, and then the Laplace transform of the particular x of t I'm working with is 1 over s plus 1, so the s plus 1 term cancels, and I'm left with 1 over s plus 2 uh, squared, no partial fraction expansion uh, necessary here and I get then the, the zero state uh, response or the 
the response that is determined by the input x as being t e to the minus 2t uh, u of t. So again, this is the zero state response. The complete response would just be the sum of these two. And so for the complete response, y of t is y zero t plus y x of t. Um, uh, writing those both out, uh, combining the terms, I get 2 e to the minus 2t u of t plus 6t e to the minus 2t u of t as the complete response. Um, and this exactly matches um, the response we got earlier by uh, finding the Laplace transform of the complete differential equation and including the initial conditions. Um, in my opinion, uh, I, I actually prefer to work it out um, by, by separating it into the zero input component and the zero state response uh, component. Uh, each of the individual terms is uh, a little simpler. I usually find the algebra to be a little sim simpler by, by taking this approach. And more importantly, it allows me to see um, uh, pretty explicitly um, which what are the, the the terms that lead to the the zero input uh, response and also the zero state response.